Let's dive in to the magnesium side of things. It's catching steam. A lot of people are understanding its benefits. Maybe you're a rookie, maybe you're a novice, maybe you're using one right now, but do you know which is the right one for you, for your condition, and what has the best absorption to get into the body? So we're gonna heavily focus on the supplement side of it in this. I'll also make another video that you can get a lot of magnesium from food sources. But if you are taking a supplement, I'm gonna help clarify this for you, give you my recommendations to what I think is the best form of magnesium when it comes to absorption, because you're not what you ingest, you're what you absorb. Okay, it's not just what you put in your mouth, it's how much your body actually takes in. So let's break this down. Now backing up a little bit with magnesium, it's responsible for transporting electrolytes in your body, specifically calcium and potassium. Now it puts those into the cells. This is very important with how your muscles fire. Magnesium is very related to the relaxation of the muscles. It's very related to heart health. In fact, I would call it one of the top nutrients for proper heart health that you need to get in your body because when it transports these electrolytes, it allows muscles to fire in their proper ways. So if you're lacking in magnesium, you're gonna be impacting your heart. Now, what it also does is it helps to modulate with those electrolytes, the electricity of those muscles firing, and of course the most important muscle you have is your heart muscle. So if you have an arrhythmia, you have electrical imbalances or weakness of your heart, this is extremely important for you to be implementing and choosing the right form of magnesium to fit you. Now magnesium, since it does relax muscles, it can also be highly involved with how the digestive system functions, or it might be involved with pain that you're feeling in those. So heart-related condition, digestive um, constipation specifically, or pain in the muscles are usually the three biggest reasons why people choose to put magnesium in their diet. I think most people need to put magnesium in because most of us are chronically deficient. Now, especially if you are taking a diuretic or a PPI where your um, protein pump inhibitor, uh, some sort of acid reflux, if you're using either of those two medications, you're more than likely deficient in magnesium because it strips it out of the system. So here's why this matters and what you can do about it. When you put proper magnesium back into your system, you're strengthening your heart, you're allowing the muscles, your heart and other muscles to fire the way they're supposed to. It can give you relaxation um, uh, um, feeling and effect, which can lower your stress levels. It decreases pain levels, and for many, it can speed up the digestive tract. So a lot of different benefits, as you can see. Now, I'm gonna cover six main types of magnesium supplements. Magnesium itself has to have a vehicle to get it into your body. So it's either in food, where it's found in a chelated form and it's attached and built into the food, or we have to attach it supplement form to a vehicle to get it in your body, and which vehicle you choose has different effects. So the first one I wanna to touch on is magnesium citrate. Now it is magnesium attached to citric acid. This is a very common one, and it's the one I would usually suggest if you're dealing with constipation. Magnesium citrate has the greatest effect on the digestive tract, so it is a form of sort of a natural laxative to speed up the digestive system. A lot of these can be found in powder forms. I've had many patients on a clinical level have a lot of success by putting some magnesium into their diet. I've a lot of children that have had a lot of success by putting magnesium into your diet. If you need help on that, you can post below. I can send you some links of certain type of supplements that I've recommended in the past on a clinical level, but citrate, if you're looking for more of a laxative effect. Now on the opposite side of that, glycinate has less of a laxative effect, but is a form that you can use to get magnesium in. I don't believe it to be the best form, it's a little bit more unclean, but you'll still get a little bit of laxative effect with glycinate. If you're not looking to have that, then we have to go to other forms. Now before I do that, those two are the ones that have more of a digestive impact. Uh, the one for pain, relaxing the muscles, I typically use is more in the oil form, and that's magnesium chloride. Now, magnesium attached with chloride typically comes in an oil. It's really good to be rubbing on if you have pain in your legs, cramping potentially, um, you're an athlete or you have a job or you use your muscles a lot, then you can rub magnesium oil on. You could rub it on your feet. That's also another really good way to get that absorbed into the system as opposed to taking it orally. And absorbing it straight through the skin has been shown to be a very effective way to get a lot of magnesium into your system, especially in concentrated areas that might be bothering you. Number four is magnesium theranate. And this is my favorite form because theranate has been shown to cross the blood brain barrier. Remember, it's not what you take in, it's what you absorb. So because of that, the vehicle theranate 
makes it a very absorbable and bioavailable vehicle, which means you get a lot more magnesium in. So I sometimes see people that are taking a cheaper version of a magnesium because theranate is a little bit less readily available, but it's worth its bang for the buck because you absorb a lot more of it into the system. So it has a bigger impact on your body's supply of magnesium. Now, the benefit of this is not only is it gonna relax your muscles, help potentially with your digestive system or release the um, fatigue or pain in your muscles, but it's gonna cross the blood brain barrier. When it does that, it helps with concentration, shows the research. So you get magnesium back restored into your brain, which if it's depleted in other areas of your body, then it's gonna be depleted in your brain as well. But a lot of the carrier vehicles can't get magnesium across that blood, blood, blood brain barrier, blah, 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 blah. So it actually goes through and gets into your brain. Apparently I need some magnesium theranate right now so I can say these words. So that's another great one, that's number four. Number five is magnesium ornate. And magnesium ornate um, uh, has, been has traditionally been um, used for heart health. We're knowing it has a few side effects. It might not be the cleanest form now. So I still like theranate um, or citrate to put more magnesium into your system. But ornate is another option. It has been linked to heart health, but I think there's better options as far as getting magnesium, especially to your heart. And then finally, there's the magnesium chelate and that's in food form. And I have other, another video I'll attach below that'll walk you through 20 foods that you can get high sources of magnesium from that you can just be eating on a regular basis to help support your heart, support your muscles, support your digestive system, and combat a magnesium deficiency. If you enjoyed this, comment below. Let me know what else you need help with. There are other forms of magnesium. I didn't cover all of them, but these are the uh, most common forms. Helps to clear it up for you so that you, if you are spending money on a supplement, can get clarity on what's best for your condition, your body, to experience real health. I'll be back with you soon.